All right, gang, so I want to move on now and talk about something else in Flutter, and that's how to cycle through lists of data and output that list of data in a widget dynamically. So to do this, I've created a new project, a new blank project, because what I want to do doesn't really fit with that Ninja ID CAD project we were creating. So I've created a new project and I've called this quotes. And what I've done is deleted a lot of the bump that comes along for the ride when you create a new project or the boilerplate code. And I've also deleted my app from inside run app as well. Now, what I'm also going to do is remove the test folder because we don't need this anymore. And the reason I keep deleting this, by the way, is because if I don't, if we take a look inside here, it references my app and it's just going to cause a squiggly line and an error. So I just like to get rid of that so we don't get that error. So let me delete it like so. OK, so now what we need to do in here is build up this new application and it's going to start with a material app like we always do. And inside this, we need a home property. Now, remember, we need to make a widget now, which is going to be instantiated here so that the home screen is going to be represented by the widget tree inside that widget. Now, this is going to be a stateful widget because we need some changing data inside this widget. We're going to have a list of data we cycle through ultimately, and it's going to output to the screen. So data could be changing here and there. So let me now create a stateful widget. So ST, FUL and tab. And we're going to call this quote list. OK, so now we have our stateful widget class over here called quote list. And it's associated a state object with it right here in this function, which is down here. And remember, we have the build function inside the state object. And this is where we return the widget tree. So let's just reference this quote list stateful widget right here by saying quote list. And now if we save this and play this, then we should see a preview of this over in the device preview. OK, then, so we have this preview now, which is just a black screen of doom at the minute. So let's build this up into something more interesting. I'm going to remove the container right here and I'm going to replace that with a scaffold widget instead. Let me just get rid of that. OK. So inside this scaffold widget, we're going to have an app bar. But before we do that, let me give this a different background color. And this is going to be a gray color, but a light gray this time. So we'll say gray and then 200. It's more of an off white. So if I save that now, we should get that gray color. OK, now we'll do an app bar. And this is going to be an app bar widget. You should be used to doing all this by now because we've done it in three different projects, I think, so far. So let's now open this up and do a title, which will be a text widget. And the text will be awesome quotes. OK, so after the title, we also want to center the title. So let's pop in that property and set it to true. And then finally, let's give this a background color and set it to colors dots red accent. We'll go with that. OK. So if we save this now, we should see this at the top, this app bar. And now we can add in the body of the app. So let's put a comma after app bar and come down and say body this time. And the body this time is going to be a column because we're going to basically cycle through some data later on. And we're going to output a separate little widget in a column for each bit of data. So let's do this column. And right here, we need a children property, which is a list of widgets, right? It's just a list. Now, before we start outputting anything, let's create this data. So what I'm going to do inside this state object, because that's where we define the data, remember, is create a list. Now, the type of data I want in the list are going to be strings. So let's do our angle bracket and say string. And then we need to give this a name, this variable. So I'm going to call it quotes and set it equal to a new list. Now, inside here, I'm just going to do a load of different strings. Well, three strings to be exact. So three quotes. And instead of me type them out and you watch, I'm just going to copy them from my repo and paste them right here. So three quotes, bonus points if you know who these quotes are by. And what we're going to do now is cycle through these quotes and we're going to output a text widget for each one. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to output each of these quotes? Well, there's a few different ways we could do this. We could just hard code them. But if we were to hard code them by actually writing the widget for each one, then we're just hard coding the data. And 
fair enough, there's only three at the minute, but in the future there might be 10. And in that case, we'd have to hard code 10 text widgets. In the future, there might be 50, and we'd have to hard code 50 text widgets. And that's not always the best way to do it. So that's one option anyway. Another option is to use a list view widget built into Flutter, and we're gonna learn about that later. But the way I'm gonna show you is to use the map function to map through our list of data and to output a small template or a small widget for each one, okay? So how does this work exactly? Well, instead of defining our list right here, what I'm going to do instead is say, okay, well take the quotes right here, which we have, and then use the map function on the quotes. Now, what does the map function do? It's pretty similar to the map function in JavaScript. It cycles through a list of data. So it's gonna cycle through this list of data and for each item in that list, it's gonna perform a function. And then we can return a value for each one of those functions. So let me just explain this as I type it. What I'm gonna do is create a function right here and this function is going to execute for each item in this list. And we get access to that item and we can pass it in here as a parameter. So we can call it A or Q for quote. I'm just gonna call it quote like that. So every time we cycle through a different item inside this list, we get access inside this function to that quote, okay? So what we could do is we could say, okay, well, that quote, I wanna take it and output it. So I'm gonna return right here a text widget and pass in that quote. So what we're now doing is saying, okay, well, cycle through this and perform a function for each item. And for each item, take that quote, that string, and return a text widget. And that's returning that into this iterable. Quotes.map returns an iterable. So what we need to do is actually return a list because remember, the children property expects a list. So if we say at the end of this dot to list, which is a method we can use to turn it into a list, then now we have a list of text widgets and each text widget is taking in the quote each time around it cycles, okay? So this should work now. If we save this and preview over here, we can see we're taking each quote as we go through it and we're outputting it to the screen. So that's working, awesome. Now, this is absolutely fine, but remember, we can use an arrow function if we're just returning a single value here on one line. So what we could do is just remove this return keyword and we can move this up here. We don't need the curly braces anymore either. So we can take those away. And what we can do is just do an arrow from the parentheses and then that's gonna return text with the quote inside that widget. And then we're turning this to a list at the end of it. So that's all we're doing here. We're mapping through a list of quotes we're taking the quote for each function or for the function that fires for each item in the list rather. And then for each item in the list, we're returning a text widget. And the text of that widget is gonna be that quote that we're currently cycling through. Eventually, this returns an iterable, which should not be the value of the children. We need a list. So we take that iterable and we use the to list method and that turns it into a list of text widgets. Okay, so if I save this now, it's still gonna do exactly the same. It still outputs all of those different quotes. Now, it may be that each quote also has an author associated with it. So each bit of data over here in the list is gonna to have to be a little bit more complex. And we're gonna look at how to combat that in the next video.